welcome to another episode of Beyond Loss, Loving Life with Karen Jaston. I'm Karen Jaston and it is so great to see you here. Welcome, 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 welcome. Let me get my comments up. Really great to see you all here. Um, and thank you. What is this saying? You during this broadcast, you can support my... Okay. Very good. So great to see you here. So what are we going to be doing today? Well, first of all, I'm going to draw a card from the beautiful Marcia Quinton cards, uh, channel guidance, uh, channel spiritual guidance cards, which I love to do each week. Now, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Karen Chaston and I am a life coach who specialises in loss. I love to help you move beyond any kind of loss, and there are over 40 different kinds. So I help you to move beyond any kind of loss and create your better everyday life. So in the comments, please let me know uh, where you're from, how I can help you. I will choose one card today. I don't choose individual cards. I don't do readings. I give you step-by-step -step guides on how you can move beyond anything that is happening in your life that is not ideal. And today the card that we are going to choose, one, two, three more things. Here you are. What's on the top? That's the card that's on the top. Let me get it over here so you can clearly see it. And it's MasterCard number four. Oh, MasterCard number four. Hi, Tiffany from Adelaide. Great to see you here. Ancient knowledge. Ancient knowledge and wisdom that rules over all. Oh, my God. Let's read what this card's about. Now, this card is for me and you, whether you are watching it live or in the replay, know that this card is for you. So ancient knowledge, ancient knowledge and wisdom that rules over all. The warriors of ancient times are with you. They have opened a window for you to see their power and feel their heart and soul's desires. Their guidance, inner wisdom and knowledge flows to you. Thank you very much. Open your mind and allow your consciousness to receive their messages and power them toward life. The ancient ones appeared to assist life on this planet by guiding individuals to make a difference by passing on the messages that they allow to flow into their world from their realms. You have been honoured with a blessing and asked to share some of your precious time in life towards service to others. How amazing is that? I think that is the most ideal card for all of us to actually embrace today because we are, we are surrounded by so much ancient wisdom and guidance and from other realms. And whether you believe it in or not, that's okay because it doesn't really matter. You can still receive the knowledge and the wisdom even if you don't believe in it. So thank you. That is an amazing card for today. So hi, Lani. Great to see you here from Adelaide. Uh, Zimra from Newcastle. Hi, Mary. Uh, it is a wonderful card, Tiffany. Isn't it amazing? So today, what we're going to deep dive in. Now, if you're not aware, my shows are now 30 minutes, which is great, from 11 to noon, noon uh, sorry, 11 to 11.30 uh, Queensland time, from noon to uh, 12.30 um, Eastern Daylight Saving Time. So, um, and I'm now doing it twice a week for 30 minutes, Mondays and Thursdays at the same time, which I feel is really good. It keeps me concise. It keeps me to the point, um, gives me enough time to obviously spread everything that we're about. So let's get started. Let me just move my mic away and let me go into here where I share my trusty little slides. So as I said, Life is a constant journey that takes us from, let me go to the next one. I might just move me down the bottom and make this a little bit larger. There, I'm out of there. That's, yeah, how about I go there? Mm, covers up the little thing a bit. No, I'll go back here. Okay, so love is a, life is a constant journey that takes us from love to loss and then hopefully back to love. But a lot of us get stuck in loss. And the reason we get stuck in loss is because our beyond loss intelligence is quite 
um, minor. You know, it's not something that we learned at school. It wasn't something that we actually know how to easily figure out what's happening in our life and then move beyond it. And it's that's where we all get stuck. And the reason why we get so stuck is because there are over let me get over here. Oh, didn't mean to put that up, Sim Simra. Sorry about that. Not that it matters. Okay, so because there are over 40 different loss events, and that's the reason why it takes us so long. So let's have a look. Like, look at that list, and you can clearly see that a lot of people think that grief and loss relates to death, you know, death of a loved one or, you know, death of a family or friends or anyone. Death in your life is what most people go, grief, death. No, these over 40 different loss events are all grief-causing situations. And that's the issue is because most people don't understand it. Most people are like, it's just change. Why can't you move on? Why can't you be more resilient and embrace it and move on and, and you know, get back to normal? Well, what is normal? You know, at the end of the day, what is normal? What's normal for you may not be normal for me or the next person. We all live our lives. And sure, we have maybe a daily practices that we do and embrace and daily habits but that's is so unique to every individual you know my husband has different daily routines to what I do sure we come together but we have a different daily routine and that's where it's really important for us to understand that when loss comes to us every single person will be affected by it in a different way even if it is a similar loss event so if, for example, that you have had a death of a loved one or a divorce, right, the next person who you meet that has a divorce will be maybe doing it completely different. They'll be um, completely um, flawed by it or not flawed by it, completely different to the way you are. And that's what I love to do. I love to help people to understand where they are and how they can move forward, how they can create that better everyday life after any of these loss events. And I do this through my process, which is a five-step process, and this is that I call the gift of loss. And this is the gift of loss staircase, okay? So last week, last Thursday, we took the first step, and the first step was to stop, okay? Okay. Today we're taking the second step, but I'll just briefly go into what the first step is all about. So what happens when you stop is that you start to bring in all of the love, all of the wisdom, all of the power, everything that you desire to assist you to try and start to figure out what this means for you now. Okay, that's what happens in the stopping process. And let's face it, over the last 18, 20 months, we've all been in a bit of a stop phase. And look at what happens. Like if you looked at your life compared to now to what it was, just say at the beginning of 2020, I'm pretty sure that you had started to do different daily habits. You've started to look at different ways of doing things. You've either embraced it or you haven't, but I'm sure that if you have, you know, either way, you can find some good that has come out of what we have been through. There is always some good. You know, we live in a world of duality, right? So there is always going to be right and wrong, left and right, you know, this way or that way. And once we realise that, we can certainly change our perspective and we can start to look at things differently. You know, our Wayne Dyer's beautiful saying, when you start to change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Now, that wasn't just a clever play on words. It is reality. Because as soon as you change your focus, just one little perspective, you will see things differently. And therefore, you will be reflected back to you differently because everything that we are and see is a reflection of who we are. So once we start to focus differently, we will see things differently. And, you know, good and bad, you know, that it doesn't really matter. You will start to get onto a path. And it's really important for us to know that 
whatever is happening in your life now is actually going to be a gift down the road. And that is, I truly believe that. I truly believe that no matter what happens in your life, there will be a gift waiting for you when you travel a little bit further down that road. Now, I'm not sure if you know my story, but back in 2011, I was a CFO of a publicly listed company, working too much, eating too much, drinking too much. And one Sunday morning, the 10th of July, my husband and I woke thinking we were having a lazy day at home, but within minutes, we were running out the back door, looking at our 27-year-old son, Dan, lying there in the fetal position. We thought that he was unconscious, but unfortunately, he had passed away hours earlier. And it was a shock. We thought a healthy 27-year-old Dan had gone out the night before. And unfortunately, he, you know, wasn't as healthy as what we thought. And you know, but through that process of me going straight back to work and, you know, living the cliches of just, you know, give it time, just keep busy, everything will be all right, you know, and me sort of just trying to carry on with my life and, of course, it not working and then, a, and then another loss event came 15 months later which came in the form of me choosing redundancy. And I know that if I hadn't started on the path that I'm on now, and, you know, becoming a life coach so that I could specialise in loss and understanding and deep diving into loss to find that better way. I know that I would have had another loss event come at me and another loss event coming to me just so that I could share what we're sharing now. And you saw me shuffling the cards like I did not pick this card before, but it clearly says you've been honoured with a blessing and asked to share some of your precious time in life towards service to others. It's not just for me, that's for everyone. We're all here to share the way that we've found something to help other people so that their way of doing things is being eased or it's a more loving way, a better way for them to be able to move forward. Um, so, Tiffany, thank you. Uh, look for beauty and you will find it Some same as with laws, absolutely true. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, I appreciate you saying that. And, Wendy, yes. Life can be broken, but from those broken pieces, we can certainly create another masterpiece. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take our second step. Now, our second step is all about accept, okay? Now, if you've ever looked at the Elizabeth Kubler-Ross um, Five Stages of Grief, her, her fifth step is actually accept. Um, yeah. So the accept stage is, for mine, is the second stage, second step, whereas it's you've got to go through all of these things um, to get actually get to acceptance. So what I've done and, and what I really truly believe is the reason that stops us so long and causes you to go through those five stages of grief is and cut to come to acceptance is the fact that I'm going to share with you now. Now, I call it the unconscious mind loss loop, okay? So we all have in our bodies, right, we're all made up of a conscious mind and an unconscious mind or, you know, there's a pre-conscious mind and the unconscious mind, which, you know, all comes together. And so when we deep dive into our unconscious mind, right, it's not as though we have as clear a connection to that as we do to our conscious mind, what we're consciously aware of in our environment and around with us. So our unconscious mind is like our big filing cabinet, okay, and it remembers every single millisecond of your life, no matter how old you are. It has it all filed and, you know, and our memory can be through, you know, we retain things based on our beliefs, on the way we saw things when it all happened, based on so many different things that it doesn't actually really mean that what we are remembering is exactly how it happened. And I love the story um, that um, Don Miguel 
uh, no, Don Ruiz Miguel um, actually shares in one of his books, and I can't think of the names, but it's absolutely amazing. And it's in, in the story that he shares is that if you're sitting in a theatre looking at your life story, you will it will be a life story based on your beliefs and based on your things that you remember. Whereas if you went into another theatre, right, and looked at someone else's story, you'd go, oh, no, that's not how I remember that happening. No, it happened differently. And then another person's another person's. So it's really important for us to remember that the way that we remember things are so based on how we see the world. That's the best way to say it because the way that you see the world, it's reflected back to you and that's the things you see. Now, it's important for you to ask questions about other people. Now, I um, when I was 16, I adopted my daughter out and she's in my life and she's going to be 48 later this year. So that's, I'm telling her, so, you know, I'm 64. I, I don't mind sharing that at all. I have no problem with sharing how old I am. Um, but the thing is that for 20 years we had a very up and down relationship and we remember our interactions and our time together completely different to we, we both were at the same table having dinner and we both remember the conversations completely different. And that's because it was based on our beliefs, on everything around us, the whole lot of it, who we were at that time, so many things that think. But now we're at a situation where we are having open and open conversations and we will say, no, that's not what I said. You've misinterpreted it or you've done all this. So this is what this unconscious mind loss loop is about. And it's really important for us to understand. This is what stops us from coming to an acceptance. OK, because we have going around and around and around in our body whenever this loss event happens, we will be the feelings that will be coming up for us will be saying things like, I wish I had. Why didn't I? If only we should have. Why didn't they? Why did I say that? Why didn't they say that? Why didn't they do that? It, it just constantly goes on and on and on. And this is what stops us from coming to acceptance. We have a lot of regrets, we have a lot of misunderstandings, we have a lot of anger, we have all these sort of things about what we did and said, what they did and said, what we didn't do and say. So this is the loop that we really is best for us to deep dive into. And that's what my accept step is all about, is about you deep diving into your feelings and figuring out what the feeling is helping you to remember, to embrace, to um, come to a conclusion where you can actually come to either you forgive or you apologise or you acknowledge. And it really is that simple. And sure, there may be a whole lot of things that will come up in this accept stage for you to deep dive into. Now, it's not easy. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not easy. But it is so rewarding, so rewarding. For a little bit of pain now, it's amazing what happens in the future because you don't need to then carry this pain with you for the rest of the year, rest of your life, which will weigh you down and weigh you down and weigh you down. And the funny thing about it is if you don't start to deep dive into yourself and find what this lesson is that this event is causing all this, you know, this unconscious mind loss loop memory is, is giving you, it's a gift, right? It is a gift. And what if you don't do it, well, then someone else is going to have to do something to you so you can get that lesson because we're all on a spiritual journey of you know, learning and spiritual lessons. And I hope that makes sense. Is there any questions? Because um, I know I've just said a real lot then, so I'll take a drink while you can write some questions. Okay, so thanks, Wendy. Um, so you're broken. 
Okay, also thank you for the healing process. So reach out if you'd like to have a chat, Wendy, anytime, just reach out. Lainey, experiencing loss helps you put yourself in the shoes of another person who experiences loss. It does assist you to do that, Lainey, but you can never truly be in someone else's um, shoes, okay? And the reason that I say that is because you've never um, had their life experiences, you've, you've never, you don't understand their beliefs, their things, all this sort of stuff that puts them to where they are at that time. It assists you to empathise with them definitely does that and I saw this great saying the other day that said if no one has walked an inch in my shoes how can they tell me how to tie my shoelaces I thought that was such a great advice and you know what the best thing you can do if you have someone around you who is experiencing loss at the moment is for you to actually say I don't know what you're going through I have no idea I um I'm I'm I just you tell me how to be here for you because I have no idea what you're going through. Even if you've been through something similar, you still don't know what they're going through. And that's the best thing you can say is I don't know what to say. I don't know what you're going through, but I'm a really good listener and I'd love to be able to be here for you if you would like to talk. And you know what? That's what most people want. They just want someone to listen. They just want to get all of these feelings out of their body. You know, start to get the feelings, which are energy, emotion, emotion. So it's energy, emotion. They just want to get the feelings moving through their body and out. And to do that, it's just about talking about it. But most people don't want to talk about it because they don't know how to respond. You don't need to respond. You just need to be there and listen to them. That's all they require. It's so simple. We've made it so hard over the years. Okay, um, so let me see where I'm at. Tiffany, I like to say offer understanding even when you don't understand. Yeah, but tell them you don't understand. You know, we, we're not expected to understand everything that's going on. Um, thank you, Tiffany. Uh, Wendy, love the energy you portray. Thank you. Um, and you know what? The more I deep dive into loss, the more I do come into my love, um, I must admit. And I so wish that I had someone like me in my life when I was going through all of my loss events in my life. But, the you know, loss is going to come again. You know, there's over 40 different loss events. But it's understanding that you have this five-step process that assists you to be able to move on. So I'm um, quickly running out of time. So that is the what, best way for you to be able to come into acceptance. Now, I'm not sure if everyone knows, but my beautiful Beyond uh, Demystifying book has been released and it's now on Kindle. And for the next week or so, it is only 99 cents US. So here's the link, which I highly recommend that you go and download the book. Now, in the book, it's like you know, 58,000 words, and it really does go into a lot of the different loss events. It also deep dives into um, the hard way we do loss, which we've, the way we've been doing it for centuries and centuries and centuries. And then I come into the more loving way to move beyond loss. And it's um, it's a book where you could literally follow each step that I have de in detail given to you and you could move beyond any kind of loss. Of course, um, you know, it's always there that you can actually do it with me or you can do it by yourself. And that's, you know, the difference is if you do it with me, obviously I keep you on track and I assist you. I, it's more guided um, and it's more have you thought about this or have you thought about this and all that sort of stuff. But and it's also about understanding that I am a great listener. Um, I come from a loving heart and it's really appreciate you actually saying that, Wendy, because I, you know, I do actually say that I'm a heart listener um, because that's what you want. You want a listening heart. You want someone who actually listens, not to answer, not to give guidance, not to respond, just literally to be able to do that. 
And you're right, Lainey, active listening is what you describe and it is very healing for the speaker. It's healing for both the speaker and the listener um, because they feel validated, they feel respected, they feel listened to. And I can tell you right now, it's sometimes not easy to do because, you know, we... um, we're used to being in a interactive conversation where someone would talk and we'd even nod or we'll do something. But to do it, you know, with true heart, it is just to listen, you know, not react, not nod. And, you know, and it's a work in progress. And I think it's a work in progress for most of us because we, it's about being there for the people. So, yeah. So that's um, that's it. So next Thursday, this Thursday at um, 11 a.m. Queensland, we will be going into the third step, which is all about identify. And that is truly an amazing step. So that's um, that's it. So are there any more questions? Look at that. couple minutes to go. Um, you know, it is all of the five-step process is a big stepping stone. Okay, Kelly, thank you. I've lost my firstborn son to SIDS, then last year I lost my beautiful 22-year-old daughter to suicide. Our last words to each other were of anger as we fought, then six days later she was gone. Having been a domestic abuse relationship also, I'm finding it impossible. Kelly, would you like to reach out, reach out to me and have a chat? Um, and Wendy, thank you for saying glad to have met me. Here is my email address. If anyone would like to just call in and and have a quick chat, I am more than happy to assist. Um, Kelly, I do believe the five-step process will help you. Um, You know, you've had many losses in your in your life and you know as we all have but I'm not degrading yours by saying that please understand that um it's really important that we all understand that loss is loss there's no hierarchy in loss you know a death doesn't you know gazump a a you know divorce or anything like that it's all is because you know the same a, a different loss event could have the same effect on people and it's not for us to judge how people should be processing this type of loss versus that type of loss. So um, I'm more than happy to have a chat with you, Kelly, if you would like to. Um, And I'm sure you have done um, counselling and stuff over the years. But reach out. It's entirely up to you. Um, Yeah. And it it, it is true. You know, a lot of people, some people get offended by that, you know, um, which and it's, it's just where they are. So, yeah. But seriously, Kelly, uh, reach out to me um, or download the book. Maybe download the book if if that's what you want to do. It is on Kindle at the moment. In a couple of weeks, I will have the paperback version. Um, I just wanted to get Kindle up first and then um, work on the paperback and um, and all that sort of get it up there and and out there. But that will be a couple of weeks away. So, um, yeah. Is there any more questions? All I can say is reach out. Oh, Wendy, thank you. Uh, loss is something you can't get back. It's a process we need to cope with to get through as individuals. Yeah, we can't get up, but we can learn from it and we can grow from it and we can create our better everyday life from it. And, you know, I'm a great believer that we're all here on a spiritual journey. We're all here learning our life lessons and loss is a huge part of it. That's why we come down here. There. We don't have loss in the other realm. Um, So we have it here and that's what we're here to learn our lessons and to grow spiritually. And it's not easy. But one thing that I realised just not long after Dan passed, and I was a little bit shocked, to be honest, that it took me, you know, over 50 years to figure it out. And this is that you are the only person that you are going to spend your entire life with. So just think about that for the moment. You're the only person you're going to spend your entire life with. So when you start to realise that, you start to realise how important you are. And, yes, people will come in and out of your life for whatever reason, but you are just as important. You deserve to be able to move beyond any kind of loss and to create your better everyday life. And that's why I know that many of these major loss events that have occurred in my life 
um, have occurred to assist me to find that better way. And that's what is written in the book and that's what's, you know, in my programs, the whole lot of it. So do reach out. Um, yeah. So where was I? Um, yeah. So Kelly, nope, I haven't. I've tried, but yeah, thank you. So very much means a lot. Reach out. Um, Janet, troubles with my adult veteran son. He is not seeing my side of the issue. I am worried about him and his negative thoughts of despair. Janet, same thing. Reach out. Happy to have a chat with you. Um, but, you know, it may not be the way you think it is, but reach out uh, because it's always good to look at different perspectives. Um, cut off a shirt. Thank you. It's actually a scarf. Um, so thanks, Lainey and Kelly. Um, the Texas, I don't much like myself at the moment. Okay, Kelly. And that's why I do what I do because it's really important for us all to love who we are. And that's what my programs do. They really do assist you to love who you are, every single bit of part of you, because we go through this five-step process and you will come back to love. You will come back to love, respect, honour. You will be amazed at the fifth step because that's the fifth step where you really, really do um, come back to who you are. So stay tuned. Fifth step will probably be Thursday week, the way we're at now. Um, hi, Nettie. Great to see you. Um, and that's it. I'm over time. See you on Thursday, um, if not live in the recording. But as always, I've put my email in here. Please um, look at, please, uh, please reach out. Just at the heading, put where you found me and also download Demystifying Loss because believe me, it's a Kindle version at the moment. You'll be very grateful that you did. Um, Kelly, uh, thank you. It's such a bright, um, understanding personality. Yep, thank you for all that advice. Thanks, Janet. I will tell this to him that he is the only person he has to live with for the rest of his life. How do I reach it? You can email me. I'll put the email in the chat. I'll do it again. Or you can go direct to thechastoncenter.com. So I'll write my email very quickly. I'm going to be in trouble. I'm over time. But great to see you and all of you be so active today. So thank you, namaste, and remember to make each day meaningful, memorable, and magical. It's all in your hands. Bye for now.